This next lesson is on expected value. I don't love the notes, so I'm going to do some of it up here to kind of introduce you to expected value. And then we're going to do the examples in the notes, okay? We'll go straight to it. There's two different types of expected values we can think of. We can think of the expected amount. The expected amount is just a probability times a number. For example, we've been doing expected amounts a lot in this class. We would find the probability or the theoretical probability of rolling a die and it being odds two times in a row. Okay? What's the probability of rolling an odd two times in a row? One out of four. How'd you get that, Mr. Riley? Yes, one in two chance twice is a one in four chance. Okay. Well, if I have a group of 25 people and I wanted to ask the question, how many of us are expected to roll an odd two times in a row, could I guess a number that would, that that would occur? You know, how many people do you think that would occur? Well, I could take my probability and multiply it by the amount, and all of a sudden I have an expected amount. What's 25 times one-fourth? Six and a quarter. Well, everybody grab a die. Come on, just quickly grab a die. This is, the, this is fun. I love doing this. And let's do that. And we do this like every class because it's so fun. If the probabilities are known, if the theoretical probability is known, you can find the expected amount of something occurring. How many of us are there actually? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16, 17, 18, 19, 20, 21, 22. There's only 23 of us. Let's adjust our numbers. What is 1 fourth of 23? It's closer to 6, but it's 6 point what? Oh, sorry, 5 point what? 5.75. So I'm thinking between five and six of us, we'll roll an odd twice. Ready? This is expected value. Set first roll. Okay, if you got an odd, you get to roll again. Ready, set second roll. How many of us got odd two times in a row? One, two, three, four, five. Okay? That's the power of probability. So right now we're at five out of 23 of us. This is the whole experiment and the theory. This is the theoretical expected amount of us. Whoa. Why don't we do it again? If you were unlucky, maybe this is your lucky day. Ready? One, two, three, first roll. I'm out. One, two, three, second roll. Raise your hand if you succeeded. Two times in a row. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven of us. Well, if I add seven and add 23, I get 12 out of 46 tries. This experimental probability, 12 out of 46, is uh, 0.26. This is equal to 0.26. This is super, super duper close to the 0.25 theoretical probability I have, okay? But the power is this expected amount, which is the probability times the number, okay? Let's talk about your quiz. 
you have the numbers 1 through 12 on a spinner. If I spin the spinner 12 times, how many times do you think you're going to get a 10? Once, right? Why is that? Because my probability of spinning a 10 is 1 12th. Well, if I multiply that by 12 spins, I'll expect to have 12 or 10 pop up once. Okay, so the answer to number five was 12. On average, it will take me 12 spins for, it, for a 10 to show up. Now, that's on average. Sometimes it could take me one spin and 12 pops up. Other times, it could take me 30 spins for a 10 to show up. 40 spins. A hundred spins even. But on average, if we do enough trials, we will get a 10, one out of every 12 trials. That's the whole ex theoretical probability and then experimental probability. Okay? So this is the total thing about expected value. So I could ask you the question, same spinner, if I spin it 80 times, how many times would we expect a two or a three to show up? A two or a three to show up. Go. Figure it out. What's up? We could find the exact if we had a calculator. What is the exact expectation? If I spin a spinner that has the numbers 1 through 12 80 times, how many times do we expect a 2 or a 3 to show up? Well, it's just going to be our probability times our amount. What's the probability? 12 numbers, 1 through 12. 16.6% probability, what's that in terms of a uh, fraction? 13.3 No, no. What is the probability of spinning a 2 or a 3? There's two chances out of 12, it's 1 over 6. That's what I was looking for. That's, right. And then you take that 1 6 percent chance of getting a two or a three, you multiply it by the 80 spins, and how many two or threes do we expect to show up? 13.3? Okay, great. Thank you. Now, does that mean we will get exactly 13 two or threes? No. We could get a little bit more, we could get a little bit less. Turns out probably be normally distributed. The further we get away from 13, the less likely it will occur. Like getting zero twos or threes in 80, tri in 80 things, it is possible to occur, but it's extremely unlikely. If you think about the normal curve with uh, probability and for distributions, probably everything's going to be really close to 13.3. The further we get out, the less and less likely that's going to occur. That's the whole power of expected value, okay? That's the first type of expected value, an expected amount. The second type of expected value we're going to talk about is going to be like your expected winnings. Okay, and sometimes we say expected winnings, but we say expected value, maybe instead of expected winnings. We say I have expected amount, and now we have expected value. Now we'll go to our notes. Yay. Here is how you find the expected value. It's the same as finding the expected amount, only we are going to add not just one probability by one value. This is a sum. X is our outcome, P is our probability. We are going to add all probabilities times 
instead of amounts or numbers, we are going to times the probabilities by our outcomes. Now, here's a quick example of how we could calculate expected probability. This is the first example. We'll just use these values. We will say these are our outcomes, one, two, three, four, and these are our probabilities. We could find the expected value of this. Now, this might not make sense. I'm just going to show you the calculations, and then we'll do something that might make more sense to you. What you'll do is you'll multiply your outcome by your probability and you will add all of these together. It is essentially a weighted average, which you can calculate when you are using, uh, when you're trying to figure out your grade. Your grade is 60% your tests, 40% your quizzes and your homework, right? Well, you would take 60% for your test grade and you would add the 40% for your quiz grade. This is a weighted average. It is the same exact thing as expected value. All of these will add up to 1. We'll take our outcome, multiply by the probability that's expected value. 1 times 0 0.3 plus 2 times 0 0.2 plus 3 times 0 0.4 plus 4 times 0.1. What do we get? 2.1. This is the expected value if, let's say, this was a spinner and there was a 30% chance of spinning a 1, a 20% chance of spinning a 2, a 40% chance of spinning a 3, or a 10% chance of spinning a 4, we would say probably on average we would spin around a 2, a 2.1. Doesn't really make sense, but watch what I can do. Let's change up the question to instead of being the expected spin number we're going to get, change up the question to expected winnings. Let's say this is a spinner. Okay? And on the spinner, if you spin a one, you get three dollars. If you spin a two, you get two dollars. Let's say four dollars. If you spin a three, you lose five dollars. If you spin a four, you earn two dollars. Well, now we can see if this game with this spinner is a fair game by finding the expected value of our winnings. Now, instead of using the 1 times the 0.3, the 2 times the 0.2, the 3 times the 0.4, the 4 times the 0.1, we are going to use the winnings and the probabilities of the winnings. So I'll say, OK, there is a 0.3% chance that I'm going to win $3. There's a 0.2% chance that I'm going to win $4. There's a 0.4% chance that I'm going to lose $5, and there's a 10% chance that I'm going to win $2. Should I play this spinning game? And if I play it, should I just keep playing it forever and ever and ever because I'm just going to win money? Go ahead and calculate that out using your calculators. My guess is that, yes, we should play this game. Two. Oh, my goodness, no. Don't play this game. The average expected value would be negative. This means that this is an unfair game. As of last class, all we could do is say, well, I guess I'm going to assign some numbers on a random digit table and simulate this game. And then after a couple simulations, I will guess that 
this is a fair game or a not fair game. Now we have the power of actually seeing that if you go up to a carnival and they say, hey, play this game, and you say, this is, this is totally a piece of cake, right? I got one, two, three numbers that I win money, and there's only one number that I lose money. I'm going to play this game forever. Well, you're going to lose on average 10 cents every time you play. The house will win. This is Vegas. Vegas always makes sure that every game you play will have a negative because there's always the chance that on one flip you get the $4 and you can walk away. And because it's fun. It's, it's true. Vegas makes sure they have this negative expectation. Okay? That's, that way they, they make money. It's also fun uh, just to uh, gamble sometimes. It's like they make sure they take care of you. Uh, you know, sometimes you'll get free food or free free drinks and stuff like that. They invite you back. You know, they take care of you. They're like, keep coming back. We like you. It's like, oh, thanks. I'll come back. That's not me, though. All right. Determine the expected value for the number of head heads in 50 tosses of a fair coin. This is going back to that first thing. The expected amount. How many heads do we expect to flip if I flip a coin 50 times? This should be easy. 25, right? We just took our number, our amount, and multiplied it by the probability, and we get, I expect, 25 heads. Okay? Those are both of the expected values that we're going to calculate. If I just said there were two tosses of a fair coin, how many heads would I expect? One, hopefully. Maybe I'm unlucky and I get zero. Maybe I'm lucky and I get two. Okay, go to the next page. I want you to try this one. Now, this one's a little bit tricky because there's going to be multiple outcomes. The key to expected value is you have to consider every single outcome and all of your probabilities have to add up to one. Let's read the problem together. A club sells raffle tickets for $5 each. There are 10 prizes of $25 and one prize of $100. 200 total tickets are sold and you bought one of them. What are your expected winnings? And then conversely, how much on average is the club profiting per ticket? Okay. Well, here's what we got. Three outcomes. I can either win $25. Am I going to really win $25, though? I'm only going to win $20. Because I paid $5 for the ticket. So that's the first outcome. I could win $20. The second outcome is I could win $95. The third outcome is what? I don't win anything. I just bought my ticket. Those are my outcomes. Just like kind of up here, we have outcomes. Underneath the outcomes, we need our probability for our outcomes. What is the probability that I'm going to win $20? That means I win one of these 10 $25 prizes. How did you get one out of 20, Mr. Stones? 10 win out of 200, the probability 10 out of 200 is the same as 1 out of 20, which is 0 .05. 0 .05. Okay. This is our first expectation. 20 bucks to win, but there's a 5% chance of winning. What is the probability of winning $95? One out of 200, which is 0 0.005, correct? 
This is our second outcome. There's only a 0 .005 chance that I'm going to win $95. We'd multiply those together. What is the probability that I lose $5? 189, right? 10, 11 people win, 189 people are going to lose. What is that in terms of a percentage? 0.945. That is my last probability. We can figure out whether or not I should buy an infinite amount of raffle tickets or just buy one for fun because most likely I'm not going to be expected to win anything. It's only for charity. Figure it out. What do we do? Just like we did up here. We take our expected winnings, multiply by the probability, add our next expected winnings by the probability, next expected winnings by the probability, next expected winnings by the probability, plus, plus. Minus 3.25, do we get that? Minus 3.25, can I get a confirmation? Yes, over here, Mr. Visser, did you get minus 3.25 when you plugged in your calculator? Still calculating, okay. Let's make sure we're doing it correctly. It's just our winnings, time, probability for that winning, plus the next amount times that probability. It's just a weighted average. This is how you calculate your grades. You do a weighted average, plus a loss of 5. That should be negative 5 times 0.945. Perfect, minus 3.25. So, should I buy all 200 raffle tickets? No. Because on average, I'm losing $3.25 per raffle ticket. Therefore, the club is making $3. I don't know why I did an integral. I'm in calculus mode. The club is making $3.25 per ticket. So this is just a charity. This is just for fun. We would say this is not a fair game. Might as well be in Vegas. This is worse than Vegas. Vegas, usually it's like your expected winnings are, if you play the right way, only like 50 cents per, per like $10 bet. You know, not much, but all about getting more and more people to gamble, gamble, gamble. And then you take 50 cents off of millions and millions and millions of $10 bets and you make a lot of money. Number four is a similar way to kind of evaluate a certain uh, uh, like life insurance policy. Expected value, you can see like how much is this policy worth to the company? How much should it be worth to you? Should you be willing to pay this based off of this? So let's read this question. We say insurance companies compute expected value so that they can set their rates at profitable but competitive levels. A 64-year-old man obtains a $10,000 one-year life insurance policy at a cost of $600. Based on past mortality experience, the insurance company estimates that there is a 0.963% chance that this, not percent, just 0.963 chance that this man, based on his age, his health, and whatever else that they uh, gather, will live for at least one year. How much can the insurance company expect to earn on this policy on average if they do thousands and thousands and thousands and thousands of these policies to these 64-year-old men just like this. Ready, set, go. Figure it out. Talk amongst your neighbor. Keep your phones away and do this problem. <laughs>
There are only two outcomes. There are two outcomes. We need our probabilities of both of our outcomes to add up to be equal to 100% or 1. Think about both of your outcomes. Then figure out what your expected winnings are or losses are based on the outcome. Then assign the probability to the outcome, multiply the probability by the expected outcome and go from there. Maybe because you were on your phone the entire time, Mr. Funk, what do you think? I know, just giving you a hard time. Assign a probability to an outcome. Both outcomes add up to equal 100%. So would you multiply, so would you multiply six hundred times this? Or is it point nine? If he lives, it's like he's paying out the six hundred and he's not gonna get any money back. Wait, so it's negative six hundred if he lives? Yes. Because it costs six hundred dollars. If you think about it from the oh, yeah. point of view of the person, uh -huh. he's paying out six hundred dollars. Now if he dies as long as you keep track of it, it doesn't matter. So if he dies, so then what is this? That's how much money the person's family would receive if the person died. Okay. So if he dies, that's, we multiply it 10 times, 10,000 times 3.7 if he dies? Yes, but he still paid 600 bucks for the policy. Yes, so I, okay. okay. All right, ready. Mr. Funk, what are the two outcomes that we could have? All right, well, is it, I either got either 0 0.963 times 600 or 2,000? Well, the 0 0.963 represents what outcome? The 0 0.963 represents what outcome? So 0 0.963 times 600 and then plus 2,000? Well, just, just tell me what the 0 0.963 stands for what? Oh, Probability of what? Okay, lives. So, if he lives, what happens if you're the guy who bought this policy? Pay 600. Good. So, should I write 600 here or should I write negative 600? Depends on your point of view. If you are the If you're talking about the insurance company, yes, but either way, if you take the point of view of the person, you'll get a negative answer, which will be positive for the insurance company. You can just take the opposite of it. So it doesn't matter. If we want to do the point of view of the insurance company, the insurance company is gaining 600 bucks. Sure. Okay. So what's the other possibility, Mr. Funk? Uh, that he, does not live. he does not live. He dies. What's the probability of him dying? And what is that? 0 0.037. What happens, what is the outcome if the person dies? What does, uh, what does, his family receives 10,000, exactly. But they also have already paid for the 600. So they only receive $9,400 of net profit. Since we're talking about in terms of the insurance company, so they actually get nine thousand well, they'll get $10,000, but they've already paid 600 so you kind of have to in incorporate both. 
the ten the six hundred dollars is included in the ten thousand dollars that's kind of given back to you. So in terms of the insurance company, you'd say you'd be paying out a loss of nine thousand four hundred dollars total on the life of things. You multiply these things together and add them together, and what do we get? Positive $230, which is how much it is worth to the insurance company. Which means it is worth the negative amount to the person. Which is saying that on average, if you buy these insurance policies, you're going to expect to lose money. Should you buy the insurance policy? Well, maybe peace of mind is worth $230 to you, right? Maybe that's fine for you. Maybe you're saying, like, I'd, I'd rather comfortably give up $230 for the peace of mind that if something happens to me, my family is going to be okay. That's insurance policies. The insurance company is like, okay, we'll take your money for your peace of mind. Fine. And now we can, you know, go pay for our peace of mind somewhere else. All right? That's the idea. Next one. We're not going to do the simulation. We don't have time. But we're going to do another expected value. I'm going to change up the question a little bit. Wheel of Fortune, uh, a Wheel of Fortune at a carnival is divided into five equal parts. Each spin costs a dollar. Because every child must be a winner, a prize is received for each number spent. If you spend a one, two, three, or four, you win a piece of bubble gum worth 50 cents. If you spend a five, you get a king size candy bar worth $3. What are your expected winnings or losses if you play this game? No kidding. Nope. Make sure you take into account that you are paying a dollar for each spin. Make sure you're taking into account that you are paying a dollar for a spin. Which means that piece of bubble gum is worth negative 50 cents to you. What do we get? Oh, zero. oh my goodness, that's great. That's fantastic. We should get a one through a four, we're going to lose 50 cents if we get that. If we spin a five, we get $3 worth of stuff. Nope, sorry, $2 worth of stuff. Well, what is the probability of spinning a one through a four? 80%, four out of five, good, 0.8, that's the probability. What is the probability of spinning a five? 0 0.2, 0 0.8 times negative 0.5 plus two times 0.2 equals what? Zero, what does that mean? You don't lose or gain any money. We call that what kind of game? This is a fair game. Since this is a game for children, you could say, don't worry, children. It's fair. 
I'm not gaming you. All right. Uh, let me give you your homework. It's another worksheet. Go ahead and put your die away. Expected amounts and expected values. Good stuff.